Dr. Don D. Costin has been chosen as the third president of Charleston Southern University. In this edition of Quintess Close Ups, I speak exclusively with Dr. Costin one on one. And be sure to download the free Quintess Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores and listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Dr. Don D. Costin. Yes, Quentin. Good it's to see you. Likewise. It's so good to have you here in Charleston. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I want to take it back to the charlestonsovereign.edu website. And they released a press release from April uh, 13th of this year. And the headline reads, CSU announces third president. The Charleston Southern University Board of Trustees unanimously approved the appointment of Don D. E. Costin, Ph.D., to serve as the third president of Charleston Southern University. How did you and Charleston Southern University meet? You know, it's an interesting story. About uh, 12, 15 years or so ago, I started thinking about with my wife what our, what our plan would be after the Air Force. And so when I thought about, uh, when I thought about the things that have made a difference in my life, um, I, my family, the church, and higher education. And so you having uh, a lot of experience in higher education, you understand how this works. And so uh, I decided to get a PhD for the purpose of seeing what God might do down the road. Uh, and about a year ago, this month, believe it or not, I realized that I was two years and two months into my last three-year Air Force job. And so I did a little math and I figured I was <laughs> going to have to do something after the Air Force. And so, I, uh, quite honestly, I, uh, I started looking for uh, a university uh, which had a mission that was consistent with who we are, our values, etc. And so, thankfully, the Lord allowed us to, to be part of the CSU family. And now you sit here as the president of CSU, and you came on a job July 1st. What is the biggest difference between July 1st and now in your mind? Yeah, I know a lot more um, three months into the job than, uh, than I knew certainly on July 1st. Now obviously coming from outside of higher education, I had a whole lot to learn. Uh, and so I spent the, probably the, the, the six months prior to showing up here being a really good student of higher education generally, mm -hmm. um, a good student of how to transition my, you know, my, my leadership and other skills from uh, being an Air Force chaplain uh, as the Air Force Chief of Chaplains to, to this role. And so uh, what I can say is at least now I can speak somewhat intelligently about what the problems and challenges and, the, and the, honestly the joys and the rewards are. Um, and so the, the, the biggest difference between the 1st of July and here is, and, and today is that uh, the students showed up um, about uh, six weeks or so ago and that really has made all the difference. You know, you can think about it, you can pray about it, you can plan for it, but uh, when the students show up you know you're in the right place. And let me talk to you about the right place. It was the Air Force for you. It was. What was it like for Don D. Costin in the military? Yeah, it, it really was it really was phenomenal. And when I look back on, on my life again, you know, I had uh, I was I was in high school. I had no idea what I was gonna do next. Um, and I think uh, the Lord actually opened up the door for me to go into the Air Force and he used the Air Force for me to figure out, you know, what was next. And so after 10 years as an industrial engineer, along the way I, I got the education to be an Air Force chaplain, which really was my calling. Um, when I was called to the ministry uh, um, as a second lieutenant uh, in the Air Force, I knew immediately that I was called to be an Air Force chaplain, um, and thankfully God allowed that to happen. So uh, it, it was a phenomenal, wonderful experience, and I just loved, as did my wife Vicki, we just loved hanging out with men and women who have volunteered to, to defend the nation. Mm. What is your favorite biblical scripture right now? My favorite uh, passage has always been Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And honestly, when I first memorized the verse, you know, as a, as a, as a single digit uh, person, you know, when I was uh, in elementary school, when I first memorized the verse, um, I think I memorized it the way most people use it. And that is, whatever I want to do, whatever I want to do, God is going to make it happen. And to some extent, maybe that's true. But I, I'm, as I grew and matured and my, my Christian discipleship, uh, you know, developed, I realized that that passage in Philippians chapter 4 really talks about contentment. 
How can you be content, whatever situation you've been put into? Sure. And trust and faith in God is what does that. And so I use it now um, in the more appropriate way. Um, but I honestly, when, I, when I'm in a tough spot, sometimes I do revert back to my original understanding. I can do everything <laughs> through Christ who gives me strength. I like that. Yeah. And obviously, everyone's relying on God in your hometown of Wilmington, North Carolina. Sure. Where are you emotionally... I believe two weeks now after Florence. Yeah, uh, thanks for asking. Um, people, when people ask about my hometown, you know, one of the things they point out is uh, that I grew up uh, in a hurricane magnet. Mm -hmm. And so most of my life has been spent uh, away from Wilmington at this point, yeah. Yeah. but watching the news and watching the weather because many hurricanes seem to love to land on the shores of Wrightsville Beach in, uh, near Wilmington. So thanks for asking. Everything, everybody in my family is doing well. I have, you know, sister, nieces, mm -hmm. cousins, yeah. you know, uncles, aunts, the whole thing, and they're right. doing well. Um, uh, but uh, many of our, our friends and um, others are not doing so well. So we appreciate those who are praying and are sending supplies and support and actually going up to help. So thanks, thanks to everybody who's listening for doing that and ask that they continue to pray for our folks in Wilmington. Absolutely. And you talk about prayer. What is your prayer to God now about the future of Charleston Southern University under your leadership? You know, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, Solomon's prayer yeah. when uh, and so he succeeds his father David, um, and um, you know he wasn't quite following the Lord as closely as he needed mm -hmm. to be. And as as I read the scriptures, I see Solomon when he realizes that he now has the weight of the kingdom, the weight of of the world upon his shoulders. He gets a little more religion at that point, which is a fairly common, fairly common uh, uh, experience for many people. And if you look at uh, um, uh, Solomon's prayer, um, he prays for wisdom and discernment. He prays that God would lead him to do the right things in difficult situations. He doesn't pray for riches. He doesn't pray for f uh, fame. He doesn't pray for fortune. He prays for wisdom because he knows that leading this group of people is God's call in his life at that point. And so um, a as he finishes his prayer, God comes online and says, way to go Solomon. You know, because you prayed for the right things at the right time, because you realize as a leader it's not about you. It's about how you uh, lead this kingdom for the glory of God. I'm going to give you that and much, much more. So that's kind of my, as I'm praying now, that's kind of what I'm praying for. God, don't let this ever be about me, because it isn't. Let it be about uh, the people that we've been called to serve. Serve. And let me get back to you. I was doing a little eavesdropping on your conversation sure, earlier. Sure, sure. And I know that you don't watch television. I, I, I watch it some. I don't watch it a lot. <laughs> okay. yet. So just, just to clarify, you know, I have a couple of shows that I watch. So just to clarify, um, I don't have a lot of time to watch a right. lot of it for one yeah. day. And I have to confess that uh, if I ever have a chance to be home on a Saturday, I'll, I'll watch more than my fair share of football games. Football. So, yeah. Yes, 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 that's yeah. right. And CSU football. Oh, yeah, 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 CSU football. So, um, I, I hate to say this, but um, <laughs> of the three games we've played, I've been to two of the games, uh -huh. and we lost both of those games. Uh -huh. so, so I'm thinking maybe I'm the problem. Uh, <laughs> no. But, but uh, so uh, Vicky and I, we're, we're headed down to Savannah this yeah. weekend, and, you know, Lord willing, uh, you know, the Buccaneers will, will bring another victory home, as they did last weekend in Hampton, where I wasn't, so oh, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, love, yeah. Love but it. I, but I, but I've also, I've also, uh, you know, we, Vicky and I, have also been to um, softball scrimmages for the ladies. We've been to soccer games for the women. Mm -hmm. We've been to uh, um, volleyball games, and so, uh, so it's a lot of fun. Being being on a college campus is a lot of fun. And you know, when you take off your military hat and your presidential hat here at CSU, yeah, who is Dr. Nandi Costin? Yeah, I, I hope he is uh, a fairly good husband. You know, and so if my wife Vicky were here, I hope she would at least say, yeah, he's fairly good as a husband. <laughs> well, you know, my, my calling in life, first and foremost, is to be a, a follower of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so um, that's what I try to do, you know, with God's help. The second priority in my life ought to be um, my relationship with my wife as, as a husband. And now, again, if she were here today, she would say, you know, you're pretty busy, um, and so I might need a little more, might a little more help around the house and all that sort of thing. Um, and who could blame her? But so that's what I hope I am. And also, also as does Vicky, 
um, we, we like to run. Okay. And, uh, we don't run together. Um, as a marriage saver, we don't run together. We run separately, but we like to run. Yeah. And a couple times a week, we go together and do a, um, a spin class on, on the, at the Navy gym. Yeah. And so we did that this morning, 5.30 start time. You know, home by 6.30 and then uh, on for the day. So that's what we like to do. We like to hang out together um, and, uh, you know, we're certainly, we're looking for a church home to be mm-hmm. invested there. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're sort of in transition having just been here a, real, a couple of months at this point. Wow. Well, we are glad to have you here. Well, it's good to be here. Yes. Yeah, as, as I've said to all of my really jealous friends, <laughs> there are worse places to have to live than Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. Well, Dr. Dondi Costin, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. It's a pleasure, Quentin. Thanks for what you do. As, as was explained to me before you showed up here, you're kind of a legend <laughs> around the town. So it's been an honor of being interviewed by a legend. Thank Thanks, you. brother. Thank really you. appreciate it. You're you. welcome. Anytime. Thank you. Anytime.